Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and today I'll be cooking barbacoa. Now barbacoa is one of those things that can mean many different things to many different people. This is something that actually originated in the Caribbean, but it's most common now in Mexico. But even in Mexico from one side of the country to the other, it's prepared with different meats, everything from cow to goat, even pork in some spots, which seems counterintuitive because you think of a shredded meat with pork, you think of carnitas. But barbacoa can really mean a lot of different things. For us, what it means today is we're going to take a fatty piece of beef, in this case, short ribs, and we're going to be braising that down before we finish it on a grill. So we've got the grilled component, we've got the beef, something fatty works really well, and that's what we're going to call our barbacoa today. It's not uncommon for you to use things like beef cheeks or even a whole head of an animal. Um, a lot of those things are harder to get, and so I'll recommend these short ribs because I love the flavor. But there's other things you can sub as well. A beef chuck roast is a bargain cut. It's fatty. It'll work in the same way. But I just love the way these short ribs work with this recipe, with this sauce. When it all comes together, it's something really fantastic. We're going to start off by toasting some dried peppers. Now these are ancho chilies. This is going to be part of the base for our, our braise and our, our eventually our sauce that we're going to build in this skillet. So we're just looking to get a little bit of heat on these until they become pliable. Get a little bit of toast on them as well. And we're working just over like a medium to medium high heat. These should only take a minute or so on each side. Now when you see the smoke coming off of them, you check this out. These are starting to blister up just a little bit and look how much more pliable they are already. That's what we're looking to do. They also become very aromatic. All right, so just about a minute on each side. These are pliable don't want to scorch them so we're going to get them off our hot skillet and shut that off for now. Then I'm going to let these cool for just a minute and we'll start working here with our chipotles. We'll chop this thing open and get rid of some of those seeds. Now they do hold some heat, they also hold some bitterness so you make the call. If you want it extra hot you can leave them in there. And then we'll just break those down into some smaller pieces. These are going to rehydrate in the braise. So we throw the chipotles in there for that little bit of extra heat. It's not too bad, but I love the smokiness of the dried jalapeno. And then that gives us some variety between the chipotle and then the ancho, which is a dried poblano. And that's just one of our go-to peppers that we use all the time anyway. So we're working with two different fantastic chilies with great flavor that's really concentrated when they're in this dried form. We can kind of break these down as well. All right, let's set these aside. Now we'll move on to preparing the rest of the ingredients for the braise. We're gonna start off with some mirepoix. We need about two cups, so that means one cup of onion, and then we'll get into a half cup each of celery and carrot. Don't worry too much about appearance here. You can use a larger dice. Eventually this is all gonna get blended up into a really delicious sauce, so you're never really gonna see the cuts. Get our carrot peeled up and dice down. Again, not super important that stuff is exactly even, but close. We'll call that a heaping two cups of mirepoix. I'm just going to crush these to remove the skins, but they can stay whole. There's going to be a nice long braising period in which they'll break down and soften. Last but not least, there's our bay leaves. 
we can move on to the short ribs. So these beef ribs that we're working with today, we've got the English cut on these. So it's one individual bone. It's got that nice big chunk of meat on top, cut into about two and a half, three inch sections. And we've got about four pounds of this. Uh, this looks a little bit different than if you've seen the flank and cut, uh, like you see in Asian ribs often. Uh, or even the big rack. So this just makes it a little bit more maneuverable. You can move that around the pan. And also we get some penetration of flavor from all sides when we've just got that one bone. So I'm gonna get some duck fat on here just for a little binder. And we're gonna get these seasoned up. All right. And our seasoning today, we've got some Cattleman's Steakhouse, lots of great herbs a little bit of saltiness to it, sort of a Southwestern Steakhouse seasoning. And I'm gonna go with one half cup of the Steakhouse. We're gonna to add to that two tablespoons of ground cumin. So we'll just give these a liberal coating of our seasoning. Pack that on there, a little oil to help duck fat to help stick. And then we'll just continue to do this process on all sides of these beef short ribs. So remember today we're starting with the braise and we're going to finish with the grilling. By no means the only way to do barbacoa, but that's what we're doing today. So we're going to get this broken down Lots of great flavors going on until these are just about falling apart. And if a bone pops out, honestly, that's just fine because we don't need it for the grilling and we're going to discard it in the end anyway. So the ribs are now going to go into the skillet with all that braised veg that we prepped up as well as a little beef stock. Okay, we've got our grill set up for indirect cooking and it's set at 350 degrees. I'm going right over the fire box here. Pour all of that veg braise in there. And then we just start to nestle in our beef short ribs, going bone side up so that that meat gets a chance to braise. I'm gonna pack them in there. The only thing now we need is a little bit of liquid. And what we have here is some beef stock. We're gonna go with about two cups of beef stock. It should just about cover the veggies down there. Now I'm just going to throw a lid on so we can trap that heat in there, let the braise start to work. Now we're cooking today on the Yoder Smokers YS640 pellet grill. Like I said, it's set up for indirect heat at 350 degrees. We're running some pecan pellets, which is not super important right now because it's fully enclosed, so it's not taking on any smoke at this time. It's just braising. But we're also going to finish with the grilling process here on the 640. We'll remove the hatch and get some nice color on the outside. At this point, all we can do is wait. So we're gonna check back on this probably in about 30 to 45 minutes as all of that comes up to temperature. We should see the vegetables start to soften down. That liquid level kind of rises up and it starts to braise the beef. Now, if at any time you feel like there's not enough liquid in there, don't be afraid to add a little bit more beef stock or a little bit more water. You just want to make sure that there's actually enough liquid for that beef to braise. It's been about 45 minutes that these have been cooking now. I want to show you guys, give you an update so you can see how the bones are starting to protrude from the short ribs and really get a feel for what's going on. Man, the aroma is just amazing. But you can see how that, uh, the meat's pulling away from the bones there. We're starting to get some braise going on down on the bottom. The liquid levels drop just a little bit, so I'm gonna add a little more beef stock because we just wanna make sure that we're getting a little bit of that beef covered so it's not just steaming, but also braising in those wonderful flavors that we created. All right, we're just gonna cover them back up and let them keep on working. We'll be cooking to tender, it's not necessarily to temperature, but if I were to guess, it's probably gonna be over 200 degrees internal temperature on the short ribs before we take them off and go to grill them. Now, we do want them to hold together a little bit on the grill. If the bones come off, like I said, that's fine, no big deal, but this still has a way to go before we get there. Well, it's been about an hour and 45 minutes, and I've been plucking some of these off of here over the last 15 minutes or so as I feel like they get done. What I'm looking for is very little resistance. 
and again if we were to check the temperature look at that we're climbing up to almost 210 so these are all finally done we're gonna remove them from the grill and crank this thing up so we'll take these out individually and what's left behind will become our sauce for our barbacoa I'm also going to be removing the door right here on our two-piece diffuser. So we can get some direct flame. So we'll slide these grates back into place. And I want to crank the grill up. So we're going to take this up to grilling temperature at 450 degrees. While we wait on that grill to come up to temperature, which is only going to take another five minutes or so, I'm going to go ahead and put together this sauce. You just want to make sure that you pluck these bay leaves out first and then transfer to the blender. Now you always want to be very careful when you're blending hot liquids because there's a lot going on in there and if you compress it and shoot it off real fast, it wants to explode. So what I'm going to do is just take the top off the blender cap and I'm going to start nice and slow. You can cover this with a towel or something to make sure nothing comes out. And then we'll start on the slowest speed and work our way up. Wow, smells incredible. All right, let's see how we did. Mm. Incredible depth of flavor. It's really rich and earthy. We've got the fat that cooked out of the ribs that's now in the sauce. And sometimes that may seem like a bad idea to have fat in your sauce, but I think it's fantastic because as you blend that up, those particles of fat are broken up super small. And what fat likes to do anyway is carry flavor. A lot of times we say fat is flavor. Fat's not flavor so much as it carries flavor. So when you include it in a sauce like this and break it up super fine, it just delivers it to every part of your mouth. I'm gonna go right over direct flame here. And what's gonna happen, these are already warm, but uh, as some of this fat starts to drip out of here, you're gonna get some charring going on. And this can get away from you pretty quick, so make sure you're staying on top of it. It doesn't take long at all to get a little bit of char on there. And just as soon as you've got the color you like on there, you can pull those off. It's only going to take a couple of minutes. I'm going to warm up some of these tortillas on the grill here. Get a little bit of color. Get rid of some of that rubbery corn tortilla texture you get when they're straight out of the package. We start to see these bubble up. Get a little bit of color on them. You can pull them off and add some more. From here, what you're gonna do is remove the bone from the meat, and you can pick off any extra meat that's stuck to the bone there. We'll utilize that. But any of the hard membranes or hard fat that's left behind, we don't need that. So we're just gonna take these nice little nuggets and shred them up. Should pull apart nice and easy at this point. So we'll shred these into little bite-sized chunks. And I'm going to continue to do this with all the rest of the ribs. All right, so this delicious fatty braised meat with the nice char on the outside. And it's, it's good to eat right now, to be honest. But we work so hard on this sauce. And this sauce has so much flavor that you do not want to forget to put this on top of the short ribs. So we give it just kind of enough to coat. You want it to look just like that, nice and saucy. And we're ready to build some tacos. We're gonna go down with the barbacoa, get some white onion on there. 
little cilantro. Squeeze a lime. That's exactly what you're going for. Get some acid to cut through all that fat. Cilantro brightens everything up. Mm. Incredible. Man. The richness is just so impressive. And the onions and the citrus cut right through it. Perfect balancing act. I love tacos. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out atbbq.com for all the products and tools featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to the sauce.atbbq.com. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.